All right, so we're gonna talk about RFID and implants. I think it just said, yep. We're live. I just texted Christy. <laughs> we're gonna talk about RFID security and uh, implants. Braden and I are. Um, no reason for the Kit Kat other than to drive Braden crazy. All right, what is RFID? RFID is a, uh, it's basically radio waves that uh, can talk to another device. Um, that can be on a card, in an implant. Um, yeah. I, uh, Go ahead. Android side, so pretty sure you can, uh, like this RFID that we have in our hands, yep. I'm pretty sure you can program like your name, your address, your uh, blood type, all that stuff, yep. and Androids can read it, I saw. I'll show you. Okay. Uh, so, um, so how does it work? There's, there's three pieces to every RFID. There's an antenna, there's a reader slash interrogator, and then there's basically the action. So the antenna, and I'll, we have one on the techno door. There's one in my hand, there's one in here. Um, the interrogator's on the, on the wall, and then the action is like unlock a computer, unlock a door, do something with a device. Uh, what is specifically on a, on a tag? So, on these 125 kilohertz tags we have, um, it, has a, it has a reprogrammable number, and these are called, the, the 125 kilohertz tags are the low frequency tags. High frequency tags, um, high, high frequency tags, um, they store more stuff in them. So like, um, for example, my tag, which I'll show you in a little bit, has name, address, all that other stuff saved in it. Um, all of these chips, use the reprogrammable T5577, and then in the new chip is 13.56 megahertz. <clears throat> That's like a consumer style NFC chip. Uh, how secure is a tag? It's not very secure, and I will show you. So I have my, my key fob. This is when I go to the door, Tony. This is when I go to the door. Okay, um, okay so this is a cloner I bought um, on eBay cost about $10. Um, this is my tag that unlocks this entire building. This is a blank card and I will show you how it's blank. I'll walk over to the door and put it on the reader. I'll put it on the reader here and it beeps but the door doesn't unlock. So now I'm gonna take this tag and I'm gonna go, I'm gonna read mine first. Yep. So I'm going to take and read my tag. Three beeps means it copied. So I'm going to push right. Three beeps mean it's done. You walk too fast. Sorry. I walk slower. <laughs> uh, I'm going to put it on the door. And it unlocks. So I took, I took my tag that was pre-programmed. I wrote it to this tag. And then I was able to unlock the door. This is, um, so the 125 kilohertz uh, is what you would see mostly at businesses like ours or anywhere around town that has, um, it's called a HID card, H-I-D card. Um, I know they've got them like at the school, they've got them, we've got them here, we've got, and there's, and they're really, I mean, super easy to clone. And so what, what I'm, essentially you could buy one of these, you could pretty much take the beeping out of it, yeah, right, and mm -hmm. you could be sneaky and touch it to someone's wallet or keys yeah. or whatever where they normally have one, and you yeah. copy it. And there, and and there are stronger, own. there are stronger readers than this one. This one is pretty inexpensive, and you got to be right on it. I don't think I can be, yeah. So I got to be that far away for it to read. So, um, if you can see, it's actually written in English and in Chinese. So. Um, the 13.56 tag, so I've got two phones here. Um, I've got the 13.56 in this hand. Um, this will be harder to see, but um, right. if I take it, I can put my hand over top. But and and uh, it's not going to read now because I'm showing everybody. We'll get to that in a minute. It also works with the iPhone. Let's see if I can make the iPhone one work. It does not read through the case. That's important to note for the future of what I'm gonna talk about here. So, let's see if I can read this one. It's not a race, you can slow down. Yeah, it's fine. 
I just sometimes I gotta I gotta push the tag to the top. And it takes a second to read it when it does find it. I don't know. We can mess with that later. So your is the, is the, is the, the thing on the door. There it is. Oh, there it goes. Um, what's that? Your phone is acting like the door. Basically, yeah. This this other this this tag in this hand is the NFC tag, and it allows you to write more data to the to the phone. So. Um, to the to the chip, sorry. So like I can have my address in there. I have a, I have a contact card in there. So like if I just met you on the street and I you wanted my contact info, I could I could send it to you with this um, with this app. What frequency? Thirteen point five six megahertz. The one twenty five kilohertz. Kilohertz is can't do this. Cannot do this. It's not that's not an NFC chip. That's a T five five seven seven chip. Let's try one more time here. It's not going to read. You can put any type of data on there. Yeah, so you get you get like 800 bytes of storage okay. on the chip. Which is like how many text characters? Uh, was there? I have no idea. Yeah, I I looked it up. It, it's uh, if you're just typing in data, you can pretty much get your name, address, phone number, yada yada. Um, it's like 16 lines of. Uh, 12 characters. It's something like that. It's it's not huge, but yeah. it's enough. It's not going to read right now because you know. Yeah. It's, it's we're in front of an audience. Yeah, we're in front of an audience. Okay, and then this here is um, the Alec House Proxmark 3. So this connects to my computer via USB, and um, there's a there's a Proxmark application that I can use to read tags and clone tags. So for example, Raiden's and my tag wouldn't work with this. So we had to use this to actually program the radio ID into the 125 kilohertz tag. Um, it's super powerful, if anybody's wondering. I mean, it's uh, generally when you, get, when you get these, these keys, you're assigned a lot number. And then that lot number is programmed into the system. So only, only these keys can be added. Um, and with the cloner, that makes all of that not important because you literally clone the lot number and everything. The whole thing is just copied. Um, so the forgotten fob, you know, I forget my keys all the time. So what did we do? Obviously what I've been talking about. Um, so before we go too far, uh, body modification is a real thing. So sticking this thing in your hand is not like, you know, all fine and dandy. I mean, they do it to dogs and things like that. but. If, if you don't take proper precaution, you can really actually hurt yourself. So here's an example of the 13 megahertz tag working on a door lock at home. So I put my hand in front of it and the door unlocks and it'll lock, it'll do just the opposite as well. Um, this, I put the link to the um, actual stuff in the, in, the, in, the, in the presentation so you can see it. Oh, my computer locked up. There we go. All right, um, so there's been obviously some of this stuff in the news. Um, I, you can look at this link on your own. It is super disgusting. But over in like England and in Russia, they have what's called Oyster Cards, and they're what gets you on the subway. And the guy was sick of taking his Oyster Card with him. The reader is about this big. He cut a hole in his hand and shoved it in, and um, he uses it for contactless getting on the subway. It's super disgusting. Um, this one is actually out of, the second article is actually out of Wisconsin. Um, the employer embedded all of his employees with the 13 megahertz chip. It allows them to open the doors, but it also allows them to pay for stuff at the vending machine and, um, and their lunch, they can do the lunchroom. They, so they have 80 total employees. And when they did the writing, 50 of those 80 had actually implanted their hands. Um, so when we first did this, everyone came to us and said, um, you know, what are you doing? And they asked a lot of questions. So I condensed the questions down to a few myths that we're gonna bust here. First one is, the government will track you with it, the GPS that Dan had mentioned a little bit ago. Um, obviously you've seen how wimpy these antennas and these things are. I mean, like you have to be right on it in order for it to do anything. So the odds of it, like anybody tracking you is just, is none. 
I mean, the antennas are too windy. I got that again today. It's like, you're kind of an off the grid person. Why would you do this where you can be tracked anywhere? It's like, if you knew how <laughs> close you have to get to this thing, you'd yep. realize, yeah, nobody's gonna track you with it. That's correct. Uh, I got this one. Good luck going through the metal detector. Uh, it's gonna set them off. And you'll see here in a minute how big they actually are. Um, I mean, I've flown a couple of times since I've implanted both of my hands and I've never had an issue with any metal detector or anything. So, uh, the MRI. So people say, well, if you've got an MRI, you'll never be able to get an MRI because you have metal in your hand. And that's, that's false. These, all these implants have been certified MRI safe. So um, I can go into an MRI machine, no problem. This is my first personal favor, favorite if you're, uh, if you're a religious person. Uh, they'll say it's the mark of the beast. Uh, and just if you've studied at all, you, you know that the beast would already have to be here in order for it to be considered the mark. And as far as we know, it isn't. And I also continued it. If you also believe that, then you should believe that the Apple logo is the uh, first forbidden bite of fruit. So. <laughs> so, all right. So picking the correct tag. So there's three tags that Dangerous, that dangerous Thing sells. Um, the first one is the NFC tag. That's the, that's the 13 megahertz. The second one is the, uh, is the 125 kilohertz. And the XM1 Plus, I don't know much about that one, but the only reason I put it on there is don't buy it because it's not guaranteed to work. And you'll see why that's important here in a second. So that's about how big the tag is. It's not huge. Uh, so the big question I had was, is can you set it up before you inject it in your hand to make sure that it works? And the answer is no. You cannot set it up before it goes in your hand because it's sitting in a, in a medical grade metal and that blocks all radio waves. So you absolutely cannot program it before you put it in your hand. And we struggled getting Braden's to work. Yep. So, um, That's when we found out that that first uh, rider wouldn't work. We thought that I had injected we, we myself were, with a faulty implant. We, ner we were nervous that we bricked it because I couldn't get it to read on this reader. Mine wrote, but uh, we were nervous that he, his was not gonna work. It turned out to be okay. We were able to write it eventually. With these 125 kilohertz, you have to get it like right on the, uh, the actual ring. So, and it's the, the antenna spot is super important. Like uh, with, the, with the plastic cards, they can just sit right on it. With, your, with, the, with John's readers on the doors, um, certain readers, you have to hold it just right to get it to read. And then he's got a pad like on the techno door here. And pretty much if you come within six inches of it, it unlocks the door. So, uh, yeah, different. I'll, uh, I'll, show, I'll, I'll show you that. We don't have to move the camera. It's fine. It's going to be like one second here. So sometimes I have to remember my hand. But um, I can put my, yeah, no, it's not. Yeah, no. And it already unlocked. So it was still in the unlock stage. There it goes. Did it too soon. There we go. All right. So the, the big square readers work the best um, for reading these tags. How big is the needle? So if anybody's had the flu shot, the flu shot's about 23 to 25 gauge. So it's a little tiny. The needle um, that we're going to use to inject Braden is 12 gauge. So it's pretty big. Um, you'll see it under the camera. The tag is inserted um, next to the metacarpal bone in the, in the fatty tissue right out here. Can you take the tag out? You sure can. Just requires a scalpel. Uh, well, the, <laughs> that place in Wisconsin, yeah. when they were doing that whatever uh, yeah. news deal, um, he said that they have had success just taking a needle. Uh. And what you do pretty much is you find the end of it and you poke a needle through the skin and then you can just kind of squeeze it squeeze out it like out. as a, yeah. <laughs> well, I, I learned something new. Yeah. All right, so it's a demo time. I put, it, oh. I put a relevant XKCD on here. So, uh, so that way, you know. <laughs> nice. It's wired up. Just let all two people see this. <laughs> Two, no, Christy and Josh probably. <laughs> <laughs> and then here's the links to the different stuff that's in the presentation. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop the camera up. All right. So if, if you are at all 
squeamish. Squeamish. Here's uh, my existing one in my left hand. Yeah, so that's Bra yeah, Braden put it's, his pretty close to the top. So you can see his yeah. going around. You won't wash your hands or anything? I already washed my hands like 10 times. <laughs> <laughs> if anyone's squeamish, you're good. <laughs> Hey, uh, don't, kick the, don't kick the stand while I'm trying to zoom in here for you. So okay. With the best possible zoom possible. Here's your gloves. Okay. Glove. Really I only need one. Last, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Rob's on. He's excited. <laughs> there. Yeah, put it face down first and then flip it over. Yeah. That's <laughs> best results. Give me a second to get this all set up. I want the good view. Okay, well, we'll save all this then. Did you sterilize these? Or? Yeah, it's done. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Little break clean. So there's it, the needle. Yeah. We'll take the top off and you'll, and be, you'll be able to see it. Uh, I'm I'm greasy quite a bit, but I have been scrubbing my hands and trying to clean under my fingernails and everything best I can on this hand to get. Make sure we all get a good view of that needle and you pull the cap off. Yeah, we'll, we'll Don't get Don't worry it. about sterilization. We'll get it. Are you going to numb them? This, no. uh, this is cleaner. Okay, don't numb them. It's no fun. Who wants to be in charge of the first aid kit? <laughs> Speaking of that, I'll get You got a cotton swab? Oh, yeah. cotton's on. Now, now people are jumping on. <laughs> how did the word get out? I posted it. it it's about to go down or something like that. Uh, how, how do you act? You squeeze this to activate it, right? Break it. Squeeze it? Yep. There you go. Okay, there we go. And then oh, it, a little swab out here. I mean, come with one. Goes down to the cotton. And somebody, you want to run the shop, get a band aid and the cotton swab? Because this, this kid didn't come with one for whatever reason. There's one right here. Oh, yeah. We literally went from here. It's about to happen with two viewers, now we're up to 12. For real? <laughs> it jumped up that fast? Oh. Yeah, there's one right here. I just posted um, hate blood, look away, and no one left, so we're good. Oh. Or live streaming on Facebook. Watch reading the blocks on Facebook. Yeah. You get it? Perfect. Yeah. Golf. Okay. One of these pink band-aids? <laughs> I got a band-aid. So when we did it before, um, John just... I bled like a stuck hog. Well, when, when we did mine, he, uh, he had to pinch the skin, because what you want to do is you want to grab the skin and kind of pull it up and separate it from the muscle, um, so that when I poke the needle in, I, I'm, I'm not poking well, into the that's a band muscle. That's a band-aid, but it'll work. Um, that sucked because John kept laughing and shaking, and it was really hard to get the needle in. I won't do that. So uh, he got this this time. Hopefully he can hold a little more still with this. Uh, this is with the guys on DangerousThings.com where we bought this. Um, recommend to use. It just kind of pinches the skin and locks in. <laughs> I need to back up. I don't blood on me. <laughs> My phone, I can, so, I can, I can clean uh, off later. What is what? this called? Hemostat or? I have no idea. Thing. Chris, Chris thing. bought it, I have no idea. Okay, so this this deal here is, um, gotta make sure you take the, the cap off here. Yeah, you're not showing it. Okay. Yeah. So that, that, the... otherwise, otherwise you gotta remove this when, the, when it's plunged into your hand. <laughs> and uh, oh, we're up to 14, let's get this guy stuck. Okay, so here is the needle. Go I, I never did figure out if it's better to which way it is? Which way it's better to do it? Stop delaying. Yeah. I'm, <laughs> I'm thinking like that. I, I would anyway, go in this way. Yeah. And okay. Go, go this way. Follow right along. Oh, well, I'll figure it out. Right. Okay. So, so, so let me see the needle going. That's all that matters. Um. Here. Go. On. Like grab it like that. Okay. Yeah. Looks good. So. 
Here's the needle. It's Holy Lord. a pretty good size gauge. I'm going to go ahead and shove her right in here. A little bit of a pinch. It's not too bad. There you go. Talk yourself through it. Go. Nope, go don't, don't let go quite yet. Let me get it all the way through the dermis. Okay. Let go. I'm in. Go ahead and let go. Mm. I'm in. Okay. So I kind of went all the way back out of the skin there. Once John let go, I had to back it out. Show it back in the skin. I, I'm going in. I want to go in a little bit further because when we did John's, um, we didn't go in quite far enough. And when I took the needle out, the implant kind of came out with it. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start to shove the implant in. I'm going to feel the implant pushing. So as I finish plunging, I'm going to back the needle back out. Yeah, I think you did too. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. So where the implant is, I'm roughly back here, but I'm still kind of on the fatty part of my hand right here. Um, it's going to keep me from being able to break that glass, crush it, anything like that. Um, so yeah, I went a little bit further than my other implant, but it's for the next like four or five days, it's going to be able to work its way back and forth and kind of find a nice comfy spot to rest. And then it's going to, going to heal in there and get locked in. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty much so, it. So that's it. Does anybody have any questions? <laughs> Don't be <looking. laughs> They're all passive, yeah. So you don't have to worry about um, running out of, uh, you don't have to worry about it, battery dying or anything like that. So the stronger the signal coming in, the, the stronger, the more range you have. Yep. What's the suggested lifespan of this thing? Like how long can you keep it in your body? I mean, it should last a really long time, right? So I, I don't know what the, what the actual, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> um, so I just did that in front of all you guys, you know, like Ta I just did that. well, no, talking through it, um, there's not a whole lot of feeling back there. I really didn't feel any pain at all. When I shoved it in, I felt a little bit of a sting. Um, but as far as moving it around and everything, it's pretty much just numb back there. Yeah. It, it's not terrible. So So with the 13 megahertz chip, it gives you it gives you more uh, functionality, like future functionality, right? So um, they're doing stuff with NFC all the time, and so in theory, you should be able to add it. If I could get my phone to actually pull up the uh, the the chip, I could show you. But let's see if I can do it again. Can you do like a pay or anything? So you cannot do a pay um, because the, the, the reader has to be compatible to pay. Hmm. So. Could you store a crypto wallet? Yeah, so I have my crypto wallet on there, um, or at least the ID for it, the, the payment ID. If I, like I say, if I could get it to so like. There we go. Right, so you can see. If I'll put the, pull this back up here. Uh, hang on here. Video. Yeah. See if it'll work. Computer's working pretty hard right now. Well, it's hard to see, but um, you can see I've got my my telephone number stored in there, a web link, the contact for um, for me, and then uh, got my Facebook page, Twitter, my Bitcoin URI. To, to pay me if you wanted to pay me, and then uh, uh, one for my Google Maps, so I can open my address in Maps. You have all that stored on on this chip here. Mm -hmm. My so third. You get lost or you lose your hand. Yeah, right. <laughs> but the like I say, the ID is the ID, and then this one also unlocks my door at home. This this one will unlock most of the consumer locks you can buy. So the one we just put in Braden's hand will unlock consumer style locks. Uh, so if you just said it's not that secure and I can clone it very often, why would you want your home with that? Right. I mean, yeah, right. So um, it's a good question. But uh, 
So you got to consider what are the odds. I mean, we, we know that, the, that you have to be really close to the chip to actually clone it. And, I mean, Tony's proven that regular locks aren't safe either. So, uh, I mean, um, the lock at home doesn't have a key bypass. So the only way they could get in is if they had the RFID. Or a brick. Or a brick. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> a little trickier on the uh, fairway side of the country club house. Uh, <laughs> See what's, the, what's the price? Um, yeah, yeah, so the 125 kilohertz is $57. The, uh, the NFC tag is $99, I think. I wouldn't know. You bought it both times <laughs> to get me to do this with you, so. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so, so there's another one I didn't put on the page, and that one um, tracks your. Oh, I finally got it to open on here too. So and here's what it looks like on Android. So it's kind of similar. Um, Android is actually built into the operating system. So when you put your hand up there, um, it will every Android phone will actually pop up and say new tag detected. Click it, and it will show you the info on the tag. Um, no, but there is actually another one that will tie into um, uh, your phone, I think, with Bluetooth or something. Somehow it works, and uh, you actually put that one in your armpit. So, and that one tracks body temperature, like more like, you know, body type Biometrics. functions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I'm not interested in that. <laughs> Basically Fitbit, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's in Hastings glass, yep. So if you were to get hit hard right here on your... On the so we, we kind of looked into that beforehand, and uh, yeah. there was like one case of somebody that had broken their uh, implant, so they went to the doctor and had the doctor take it out, and uh, it ended up not being broken. It was just irritating him. Yeah. Um, but so far, they're, I don't... On dangerous things, they, they said that there are no one that's reported an actual broken one. And the the fact is, like, it, it's a very fatty part of your hand. In order to crush that glass, you're going to be crushing all your bones and everything too to mm -hmm. really get down to that little glass implant. And and I will say too, when you get the implant, I don't know about for Braden, but when you get the implant for the first few days, it it stings a little. Yeah. In, inside, you know, as your as your body is like, you know, trying to be accustomed to this foreign object stuck in it. It stings a little for a few days. And it, it will move around just a little bit for the first week, kind of like I said, finding that place to settle. Like John's, when we took the needle out, like it started to come out with the needle and we just kind of shoved it back in there. <laughs> and uh, it ended up finding a good place to yeah, settle. Yeah, it was and, uh, that video to the YouTube version. Yeah, <laughs> there, yeah <laughs> I don't know. We should put no, that we'll, video on. There was I'll cussing and, <laughs> okay. Are you guys happy? I use mine every day. Yeah. So every single day I, when I come here, uh, it unlocks the doors for me and I don't have to remember my keys. I use mine two to three times a week, just accessing buildings with uh, the HID. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The phones can't do the HID. The phones do not do the 125 kilohertz, correct? They do the, they do the 13 megahertz. Yep. The one that I just put in. Yep, the new one. The NFC chip, basically. So you, have, so Brady, you have one of each now. Yeah. But you got a program the one you just put in. Yeah, so this one that we just put in, um, it's in the box comes with what it's currently programmed as, right? Um, really, there's not, there, there is no programming. It doesn't give you the radio ID. Okay. So the way we'll program it is we'll actually use the Android phone to program it because the yeah. Android, Android will write so to it. You should be able to check it now to see if it's programmed. Uh, yeah, we can try it. Um, the thing is, is that uh, it has a hard time going through the band-aid. Let's try it. Oh, yeah. there's blood let me, all over my phone. Let me phone. try to feel it. <laughs> let me try to feel where it's at. It's right there. And rub blood all over the back of it. Here, let's see. If, let's just do this. Where is the antenna on? It's up at the top. Phone? Okay, yeah, it's up at the top. Here, let's let's try to write it once. Here. So this, that should read it if it can if it grabs it. But I had a hard time reading through the band aid. Um, 
for the lock at my house, I just it wouldn't read through the Band-Aid. I mean, like I said, these antennas are pretty terrible. On your phone, it's terrible. No, the actual the antenna the actual, in the your hand. Capsule. It's it's very weak, and once you're going through the skin and everything, yeah. um, some like I said, depending on the reader. Um, Right, so the way it's powered is, you know, through the device you're putting up to it. So if it had a stronger antenna, like say in the phone, it should, in theory, um, raise it and power it on and boot it up. How many quicker. bytes is the store? Somebody's I, I thought it was. I thought it was 800 bytes. 800 bytes, which is 800 text characters. There you right. Go. Did you get it? No. Oh. Nope, I can't get it to read. Let's try this one once. Yeah, it might have to be written. So do they sell like the eBay cloners for that type too? Uh, yeah, so um, this cloner actually works with it. So here's the kit. So I got this kit when I got the cloner. Came with two of the 125 megahertz cards and two of the 13 megahertz cards, blank. And then it came with the dongles, 13 megahertz dongles to program. Hmm. So if I didn't want to have them work you would literally not have to ask anyone there at your work to do it. It would just, you'd be able to clone it, program it. So, but like I said, the ones you put in your hands do not work with this. It only works with devices like this. Um, yeah, we have basically more powerful ones. And even this is really hard to get it programmed. How much do the cloners cost? This was about $10. Um, this was a little bit more expensive, just it's more functional, and it works with the Proxmark application. It's actually a graphical application that you can use to program the cards. Why more expensive? Oh, it's probably $20. Yeah. yeah, I can get to work. <laughs> <laughs> He's not nervous about it. This happened before. <laughs> yeah, this happened last time, and we had to go with the uh, higher powered uh, yep. rider, and I don't know if it's my skin's harder to read through than John's was or whatever, but for whatever reason, it took a little bit to write it. Um, but once we got it written, um, the readers go pretty easily. So you could implant it too deep, couldn't you? You could, yeah. Yeah, yeah you could. It, they, they, so for whatever reason, you know, your body like tries to reject it. And so as you heal, it actually comes more to the surface because you know, your body's trying to reject it. So as, as, I've, as I've used mine, it's actually become easier. One, I'm more accustomed to where I got to put my hand on the reader, but two, it actually is coming to the surface of the skin. And as you saw earlier, um, my left hand, I can just go like this and you can see the whole bar in my hand right now. Um, as, I, as I flex the muscle in the hand, you can see the whole thing just push up against the skin. Yeah. Anybody else have any questions? I'm waiting to see if anyone on Facebook Live has questions. Hell yeah. Did you? Well, how many bites? <laughs> okay, I think that's it. All right, thanks everybody.